today I thought it would be interesting for some of my Canadian viewers to learn what assumptions people outside of Canada might have about Canadian people. Ergo, the title of this video. Before I get into today's video, please be sure to subscribe and like or comment on the video. 75% of you guys don't and if you choose not to today, an unfortunate curse will befall you, which is that the next time you shave, your stubble will just pop back up in like two seconds, which would be unfortunate. And you can avoid that by just subscribing or liking or commenting on the video. Today's video is sponsored by one of our returning sponsors and it's Surfshark. Surfshark is an app and browser extension which allows you to place your laptop anywhere in the world and lets you access the internet as if you were in that country. It lets you unblock websites and content that you might not usually be able to see. I'm currently in Spain, I can watch Irish shows, I can watch American shows that you guys recommend to me in comments. All I have to do is set the location to where I want to be able to watch stuff. So let's say I want to look at Netflix America. All I have to do is go into Surfshark, set myself to wherever in America. Just recently I had a video blocked in certain regions and some people who had been using my trial or had bought Surfshark before were able to see the blocked video, which was very cool. It also adds an extra layer of security to keep your photos, videos, documents, and private things private. Surfshark have given me a special code, Diane, for 83% off and three extra months free. So thank you to Surfshark for supporting this channel and on with the video. Okay, so the first thing that I would assume about Canadians is that you guys get tired of being lumped in as the same as Americans. And I can relate because being an Irish person, we get lumped in with people from the UK a lot but sometimes i find myself also going along with it okay hear me out if i see something with a title that's like uk versus us people i'll usually go oh it probably applies to irish people too if it's something i'm interested in i would assume that canadians kind of do the same with videos that are titled american people at least i hope so a lot of my audience are canadian so sometimes when i'm saying american i'm kind of going this does or doesn't apply to canadians as well but it equally gets annoying for us being lumped in with UK people and I'm assuming it's equally as annoying for Canadian people being lumped in with American people because as much as there are similarities there are a lot of big differences too it's a very unique culture and I appreciate that about Canada versus America but there's also that parallel that exists we feel you Canada, we understand the pain. The next thing I would say about Canadian people is that I would assume they're generally a very relaxed kind of people. The one trip that I made to Canada in Calgary, I did find that everybody was fairly laid back. Nobody was uptight about anything. Everybody was just pretty chill. Like the attitude was generally like, everything's gonna be okay. We'll get through this, just stay calm. We can talk about it. It wasn't a confrontational kind of attitude. Canadian people just seem very relaxed and down to earth. And that leads me on to the next point, which is that I find Canadian people to be very straight, which leads me to think that they're also highly intelligent. And hear me out on this. I think that comes down to the fact that Canadians are pretty good at categorizing things like when they're in work, they're in work. And when they're playing, they're playing. Like they keep those areas of their lives as distinct as possible. I think in that way then when they meet people from outside, they're also kind of looking for an immediate knowing of whether are we cool, relaxed, happy, calm people together? Or are we like, is this a professional working relationship? Canadians enjoy that categorization and need it in their lives. That's what I assume looking from the outside in. So like if for example, I was having the banter with somebody, they would take it one way if they felt it was like a professional relationship and they'd take it another way if they felt it was like a friendly relationship. They take things quite literally if they think that that's the kind of relationship that you have with another person. You're very down the line, straight up. That's the impression that I get about Canadian people. Let me know if you know what I mean and if you think that's true in the comments. The next thing that I think about Canadian people is that your etiquette is very, very important to you. The system of things is extremely important to you and breaching that etiquette is seen as kind of offensive to Canadians, definitely more so than it would be to American people. So this is an assumption. I'm thinking that Canadians value you saying please and thank you very highly and if you don't, they find that a little like, that was rude, which is kind of how I would be as well. Like if somebody doesn't say thank you when I give them something, it definitely gives me a slightly different impression of them. 
American people tend to be polite naturally, but if somebody doesn't say thank you or please for something, they don't kind of take it personally. Whereas I kind of feel like Canadians would like make a mental note of it and say like that person doesn't have very good manners. Rude. The next assumption, okay, I know this one seems obvious, but it's just, I've never acknowledged it before. My assumption about Canadians is that you guys love ice hockey. Like I assume all Canadian people are into it and even if they're not into it, they have to watch it to some extent because it's always on the TV. My assumption is that ice hockey is a bit like in Ireland, if a guy goes into a barber's, the barber will automatically talk to a man about football, whether he's into football or not, like soccer, football, football. I'm thinking that in Canada, the equivalent of that is ice hockey. So if you go into a barber's and it's ice hockey season, I don't even know what that is, but that people will automatically talk to you about the ice hockey game and assume you're into it because you're Canadian, so. Yeah. The next assumption I have about Canadian people, and this is definitely based on observations, I think you value punctuality very highly. It's very rare from what I've seen to find a Canadian person be late to anything. Now this may have been based on my personal experience, but when I was over there, our family that we were staying with wanted to be sure we were everywhere 10 minutes before we were meant to be there. So they had a lot of emphasis on us being there punctually. This might kind of fall in with the etiquette thing again, like Canadian people don't like bad manners, so they don't like to be late. So I don't know, maybe let me know in comments if you think that is a personal thing that was just going on with the people I was staying with, or if it is as prevalent throughout Canada as I think it might be. The next thing that I would assume about Canadian people is that there are a lot more famous Canadian people than us around the world know about. We would just kind of assume a lot of famous people are American, but when you look into it deeper, we find that they're actually Canadian. I also think a lot of Canadian people pretend they're American when it suits them, when it's just easier to say, yeah, I'm American. So yeah, there might be times like when you're filling in a form or something, I don't know if maybe Canada's not on the form or it's more beneficial for you to say you're American, you might just go along and say you're American because it's just easier. It's like sometimes when people assume we're English because we speak English, from Ireland, we won't kind of say we're English, but we won't disagree with the assumption, if that makes sense. If it benefits us, we'll just go along with it. The next thing I have noticed about Canadians, especially in comments under my videos, I can sometimes tell when it's a Canadian because they will say they love something or they hate something. They make like quite exaggerated statements in terms of love and hate. So they'll say they love a certain type of chips or they hate a certain type of other chips. I don't know why I'm using chips as the main example here, but chips. So on that, I think that maybe Canadian people are a little bit dramatic. Maybe, maybe a little bit, maybe a smidgen. How dare you? Like bold sweeping statements like, I love these guys, I love that band or whatever. I think maybe that's a Canadian thing. That's the hunch that I get. Like sometimes when you guys say you hate something, you don't actually hate it with a passion. That's just like a commonality in the way that you speak. You'll make like a broad statement like hating something rather than disliking it. Let me know, am I on the right track here? The next thing that I would think about Canadian people is that there's a lot of insider knowledge that is not written down. So the way you do things is just something that everybody who lives in a certain area in Canada knows but it's not necessarily like the written down rules. So like say for example, you're all going to the cinema, uh, everybody might always um, buy the popcorn, but not buy the candy because you buy it in the store outside, like it's an unwritten rule. Or maybe say you're in the supermarket and there's a big long queue and there's a person behind you with like one thing and you have like 20 things maybe, the norm there is that the rule is that you always let the person go first, but it's not like a written down rule, it's just something all Canadians know about that people outside don't necessarily know about. I also think on that line, there might be a bit of nepotism in Canada. Like I think Canadian people do put a lot of value in if they know somebody or if they're friends with somebody's family or something. But again, let me know if I'm on the right track with that. Is nepotism a big thing? It's definitely a big thing in Ireland. Nepotism is huge in Ireland. So. I'm thinking it might be the same in Canada, but let me know. And finally, the number one assumption that I make about Canadians is that they dislike confrontation. 
And I think that it's not because they're not able to do confrontation, it's because they're not really arsed having a confrontation. Like it's not important enough to Canadian people to have a confrontation about it. They just kind of feel if somebody has a different opinion about something or something isn't going your way, you're just not bothered dealing with it. It's just easier for you to be not confrontational. I think that's kind of how I feel about a lot of things. I'll just like let it go. I also think this is why Canadians say sorry a lot, which is something people always say about Canadians, Canadians say sorry a lot, but I don't think it's because they're genuinely sorry. I think it's because they're just like trying to just avoid a confrontation and be nice and just be like, oh, sorry. Like they don't mean sorry from the bottom of their heart. They mean like, saws. You know, it's not a big deal. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Let me know below. That's it for today's video. I'll see you on the other side. Bye. Sorry about the birds tweeting in the background, by the way. I can't stop that. Shut up. Hang on, I'm gonna go up with my pellet gun. Joke! I was joking. I'm joking. People recently didn't, couldn't believe how bitey you were with the slipper. Big, big open mouth. Oh, kill that slipper, kill it. Kill it, kill it. Oh, yes. Oh, he's so bitey. Oh, yes. Oh, you're so bitey. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You don't just sleep in the background. You are actually a very active doggy woggy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, it's scaring me. It's scaring me.